What's up? What's up? What you been doing, man? Uh, look at this. Dude, I got in the truck and it's all clean. Even smell kind of clean. Kind of <laughs> smells clean. What's up, dude? What's up? How you doing? All right, what is up, everybody? Well, you're obviously watching another video. We are back on the road. Uh, if you've been following along with the videos, of course, you kind of know what's going on. We are now back in Alabama for the sixth Bassmaster, seventh, Seven. seventh Bassmaster Elite event here on Gunnersville. We're going back to Scott Canterbury's tonight in Odenville. That's where we've been kind of basing out of. So anyways, guys, that's what we're doing. A little travel vlog. So we're going to bring you guys along on this whole adventure. We're going to, we've got a house rented at Gunnersville, which is pretty cool. And we're going to spend tomorrow getting tackle rigged up for this next event. And, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be a completely different type of event. So what I did for the last couple days is I went to the Keys for like a day and a half, which was a lot of fun. Rode around in the boat and did a little offshore fishing and uh, hung out with the kids and the wife. And we went to the lake and i didn't do any fishing but um well, actually i did do some fishing with hillary in the canal we did a little little video but anyways it was a lot of fun uh i'm not sure what's going on i'm not gonna roll up in there it's 11 30 at night let's give them a little peace and quiet and we'll run up in there with the camera and everything so guys we're gonna sneak in here we're gonna uh go to bed we're gonna sleep in a little bit and then we're gonna get up in the morning and we're gonna go out here and we're gonna rig tackle in the boat and we're gonna show you all the things we're gonna take to garnersville so so here good night we'll see you in just a minute well, good morning. Yeah, that was quick, huh? You thought I was gonna be gone for a little while. Well, I did get some good sleep. It's about 8.30 in the morning. We're again here at the Canterbury's. Job uh, at hand is to get that boat packed up. You know, because we've had these tournaments back to back to back to back and truck and the boat has not been home. Dylan has not been home uh, in a month and a half. I leave, go home, try to get a few things done. And then I have to go and re-rig everything. Like, cause every one of these tournaments, it's like, you know, you have to kind of restock it up. So like this one here, it's going to be offshore fishing. It's going to be ledge fishing. It's going to be some deeper grass. So it's going to be totally different than what I have rigged up for, say, Neely Henry or even Fork. So I've got to spend probably four or five good hours taking everything out of the boat, reorganizing everything back in the boat, and rigging up probably 15 or 20 different rods. So that is, uh, that is what we're going to be doing today. We're here. Again, at Canterbury's house. If you haven't been following the series, you got to check out Canterbury's Bass Cave right here. Check this out. I mean, this this right here, it's goals, right? I mean, awesome stuff. I wish I had a garage quite like this. He's got his deer on the wall. He's got all of his tackle back here. Rods, keeps his boat all good and dry. Awesome place. So he's been housing us for almost two weeks. So he's. Uh, I think he's going to send me uh, the... I think the monthly payment for his house, I think he's going to mail that to me. <laughs> three, weeks. three weeks. It's been three weeks. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So that's definitely, yeah, I think I have to pay a month's worth of a mortgage here for that for sure. So, guys, it's been, uh, you know, if you, if, if you watch the uh, series, the Neely Henry series, you know, hats off to McCoy, hats off to Dylan, all the hard work. Jacob, of course, you know, they're doing lots of good work for us getting those shots, getting that storyline. I mean, that's awesome stuff, guys. So if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to click the link in the description and uh, follow the Neely Henry series. So, but that being said, this is the Gunnersville series. We're gonna get this thing started, guys. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's all business, right? I mean, we're getting down to the last part of the season and we've gotta make some stuff happen. All right, guys, it is time to start rigging. Hey, before we get too far into this, I want to say a huge shout out to Skeeter and Yamaha, guys. I, I, I don't know if I really talk about them enough, but guys, this is the FXR21 uh, with the 250 show. Look, I've been in a different boat for many, many years. And look, I was happy in that boat. It did look great things. But, and I wasn't sure, to be honest with you, what I was going to think of a Skeeter. Look, I've been around Skeeters my whole life. Uh, I know a bunch of people that have run Skeeters. I fished out of Skeeters, and it's always been an awesome uh, boat, I thought. Like, if I always thought in my head, if I, if I had to switch to a different boat, that was definitely one of of the ones that I would want to would, would want to run. And and this FXR21, it's been awesome. The deck space up on the front, I have lots of room up there. I'm farther forward, as you heard me talk about, so I can actually make a little bit better cast. The storage on it's great, and the ride is amazing. I'm going to tell you right now, guys, that uh, no kidney punches in this boat. I've been in some pretty rough stuff. Really rough stuff, actually. 
and uh, it rides really good. It's soft. Everybody kept saying it's a soft ride, and it really is. So the, the Yamaha 250 SHO, I mean, proven platform right there. I mean, that, that engine is like the most reliable engine on the planet. No matter what anybody says, that is a fact. Anyways, just good stuff. I didn't want to, you know, I don't want to talk too long about it, but look, guys, if you're in the market for a boat, the FXR21 or the FXR20, like uh, Canterbury runs, of course, with a Yamaha on the back of it, it's a good little choice, so. Little cracker stickers right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to need these. Some deep diving crankbaits. Some swim baits. Got the pit crew out here washing. Yes, you do. Pit crew. Had the foam cannon going, you got it all. And I never would have known it until I got to washing, but we got a new sponsor here. It must be McCoy sponsor. I've got a new sponsor. That's what it shows. Where? Right here. Dang, I got a picture of you on my truck, McCoy. Here, stand beside it. Stand beside it and smile. Turn around, there we go. There we go. There it is, right there. That's funny. Yeah. Hey, whatever money they send for sponsorship, that's your money. So, so Bucky, whatever deal you got, there it is. All right, so this is our typical day, guys. We're gonna get the truck washed, get the boat done, and uh, almost, well, I see we're halfway through the boat. Okay. Wow. What a, uh, what a tackle session that was. You know, it, guys, you, all right, so you saw how this boat looked, right? I mean, stuff was everywhere. And I've got all my stuff rigged up from chatterbaits, drop shots, deep diving crankbaits. I'm excited about, I'm excited about these. This could be a big player. The Grande Recon by Guggen Squad. This is a deep diving uh, crankbait right here. Rattles in it, caps well. Got a couple of those rigged up. Got big swim baits rigged up. I've got a mag draft rigged up. Rigged up. Got sight fishing baits. So this is kind of one of those tournaments that we, I think, is going to be like you could go up shallow and find them, and you can go out deep and find them. So you kind of have to have seven or eight rods, or maybe even ten rods rigged up for your out deep stuff, from hair jigs to crankbaits to up shallow, which is going to be from like wacky rigs to Texas rigs to Swimming worms, I did, which I didn't rig up. Like I need my speed worms. Speed worms. I just remember my speed worms. We now we have to unpack the truck and go find speed worms, because speed worms will work. The right time, this thing's gonna catch him. What is that? Some secret thing? Why haven't you told me about that? Why yeah. are you holding out, man? I ain't holding out. Wait till the last dang minute. I got some. Sunday, I can't even order one. No, I got. Oh, you got some? Yeah. We can get them. It's Look at this up. thing. It's a spinner jerk. Is that a spinner jerk? Awesome. And you wind it now. Listen to that. Wind it, this one. What? Oh my gosh, dude. Okay, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's straight up ridiculous, dude. You can twitch it or whatever and make it click. How to bite that there in the shed, man? Yeah, they're gonna bite that. Freedom tackle makes it. Yeah. Now that's pretty cool. Okay, yeah. You have some with silver blades? Yep. Dang. Dude, I don't know how we end up with more stuff. And it's like, I don't even know where we're going to put it off. The whole truck's full. I feel full. like we keep accumulating. I know. I mean, and McCoy and I at least keep accumulating stuff. So every time we have yeah. like a whole other bag of stuff. We're going to have to get a... Uh... Dude, I'm glad it's the last tournament. Because this is, this is super packed back here. Right? Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. dude, you can't even put anything in there. Thanks again for letting us stay, dude. It was fun, yeah. dude. All right, Odenville. It's been fun, Odenville. I'm gonna miss this. This is like, I mean, y'all, y'all spent like three weeks here. This is like a three-week journey for y'all here at at the Canterbury Compound. Yeah. So now we are headed to uh, Scottsboro, Alabama, Lake Gunnersville. Let's hit the road. Let's go. Finally.
There's Gunnersville, dude. Check it out. One of the most storied bass fisheries on the planet. A lot of history. A lot of careers. A lot of cool stuff has happened here on this lake. To win on Gunnersville is is a special win. It's an extra special win. There's there's, there's a handful of lakes in the country that, that if you win there, that's it's Fenway Park. It's what it is. Spooky, dude. Spooky. This is low key. It's kind of <laughs> scary. Did you go down the right route? I don't know, dude. <laughs> I, don't think I don't know. I'm not sure. Then there's nobody's lights are on or anything. There's no power down here. <laughs> Who lives there? Holy cow, dude. Chucky? I don't know if you went down the right road. Dude, where are we? <laughs> I don't think I'm on the right road. I see headlights. All right, we made it. We made it. Okay. We're at mile 87, by the way. That's what it says on the telephone pole. It's like one of those movies where, like, the people went off the road. And the movie starts with, like, they're on a little family trip, you know, and they go off the road. And they go and left, right, left, right. And then they end up in this, like, weird neighborhood that they can't get out of. <laughs> it's the only problem when you rent things off of Airbnb, VRBO, you're not real sure where the heck it is. But it's actually kind of cool. I actually kind of like this. It is a little, it's a little creepy coming in. I'm just going to throw that out there. Dude, don't go in there, though. He did say don't go in there. He told me specifically. Don't open that door. What's up, mate? Dude, I was scared coming in. I told you. Like, that, 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 there was an abandoned house with a car. Where's the abandoned house? On the right, when you first come in. Abandoned house. And then there was oh, a yeah, car yeah, sitting yeah. there with the lights on. And they all freaked out when we pulled in. And then there was, a, there was a trailer house that had a bunch of cars with no lights on. And like a dog with one Yeah, eye. but it had a big rock on the front that says, it was painted and said, be kind. Yes. It's got a big good sign. Yo! There's a... Jeez. What the hell? What's up, man? There's like two room. beds in this loft area. Really? And there's three bunk beds in the room next to it. Really? Yeah, yeah but you don't. Y'all are all in the bunk bed room, obviously. I call the single bed. Oh, look. This is, dude, I don't even know. I could sleep this way or this way. You could sleep or this way. Or upside down or whatever. Look, you could. could fit. If you I pull the bed closer to the to the here, I can watch TV, dude. Lay on your stomach. I can just lay on my side. Head. Hey, it's actually awesome. Dylan wanted to know where editing is going to take place. I'll show you. Come on, come on, McCoy. Is there a bathroom up here? Chop, chop, McCoy. Yeah, that's the thing. That you have your own work oh, desk. That's my desk. With a, a 1972. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to have to get one of those bulbs. Do they make those anymore? So there's two bedrooms down here. There's one right here. Dang, that's a big bed. That ain't as and that's big a as big that. bag. Holy crap. That ain't as big as Scott's. That's, like, that's a freaking... Like, Scott's has got the California... Ca what are you doing? Looking in your closet. I might have something private in there. Well, I'm looking for a table to edit on. There's a table right here. Where? You missed it. This is your editing table. I'm going to edit. You got Wi-Fi. So, one bathroom up here. It's room when he gets here. He's in the all quiet room. It's like a little. Like... This is kind of a creepy room. Pretty cool little spot, guys. I do have to say, pretty cool little deal here. So we're setting up our little editing suite. I think it's going to work, right? Yeah, yeah it'll work. Yeah. We'll move the like barely fit. kitchen table up. We'll put a monitor there, monitor here. Oh, it did fit. Look at there. Barely. So I think Canterbury, he's actually going to come. Uh, he, he's not coming tonight, dude. Yeah, he said he wanted to go to sleep in. We got a, we have a bird bath. I don't know. There we go. Nah, that works. Bro, this is a good garage. Yeah. Yeah. You can put two boats in. We could edit in here, bro. No, those are antiques right there. We got a deer stand right there. You're talking about That's antique. Look at this vacuum cleaner. Right. That's an antique. Dang. That's an old deer stand right there, brother. Yeah, well, I don't want to get use that one anytime soon. I want soon. to hook that on the tree and let McCoy climb it. Yeah. All right. Oh, there's one of the Bash Brothers, Jose Canseco, with a dirt dauber's nest attached to it. Hmm. Oh, look. 
our first clue. Dude, that's our first clue right there. That's what we need to fish with. A Cinco. Nuh-uh. That's a, that's a... That's a watermelon... Uh, that's a, a speed worm, ain't it? Is with it? the tail broke off. Is it? Oh, dude, look at this. Like, for real. Yeah, no, for real. I might have to borrow that one. That old big O? Yeah. Whoa! What is that? Like a bat or something. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. That's awesome. No, that's a Norman, isn't it? I know, but it's good, dude. It's old school. Dude. Heck yeah, that's... So there was a high, there was a bunch of high school kids staying here, and they left today. Hmm. They had a high school tournament yesterday here. Oh, really? Dude. That's a Bear Bryant hat. Put it on. Is this for like... That's Bear Bryant hat. There, there might be a Black Widow in there. No. Put it on. You're good. That's a a child's hat. No, it's not. <laughs> Panama Jack. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I tried that hat on. <laughs> you have to try this on. Maybe he was a police officer. Dude, no, there is spiders in oh, that no, one. No, no wait, that's, a horse riding. that's a horse riding helmet. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> no that's, that one's really jacked. Woo! Up. All right, let's see if the boat fits. I, I know. I don't think I can get it in there. Your motor's not in there. I mean, Jack put I down, just, maybe. I would just push it on through. I mean, look. It's not going to matter. <laughs> I have to get a new cowling anyway. Is it going to work or not? Don't. What happened to your motor? You said you didn't know. That's BS. I, I don't really know. Honestly, I was cleaning it and saw it. I think it's from whenever McCoy huh? crashed it into <laughs> the shelf at that house. Shelf? Yeah, shelf. Pickwick? Uh, you got... A good four inches on the motor and a good seven and a half on the power post. I guess he's clear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll just leave it like this. He said, man, there might be some mass burglar, bur burglary here this week, but I've never had a problem in 30 years. All right, this is our, our house tour. Our uh, garage and our little ranch house. So I need to get my uh, computer out. we got to transfer some waypoints from back in the day from stuff that I've saved. And then um, spend a little time on the map tonight. You know, I need to get my iPad out and kind of figure out a game plan. So there's going to be a shad spawn for sure. And it's a huge lake. So we got to figure out where that's going to happen. Fish real effectively, efficiently, and uh, cover a lot of water tomorrow. And kind of pay attention to what's going on around us. So these boys get so scared all the time. They're in the garage right now. Dude, is this poison ivy? Like seriously, is I think it is. I scared you. You actually did scare me. <laughs> <laughs> the hell is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> oh my gosh! Look at this. Look at this. No! Look, look at this. Ah! Why are you laughing? <laughs> it's in your shirt. <laughs> no, shut up. You did it not. It is. It is in your shirt. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's not. It was one of those moths. Oh, I don't think fangs. it's there anymore. It was a fang moth. <laughs> <laughs> See, there he is right there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Dude. All right, so on a serious note, this week is all business, guys. You know, it's, it's Gunnersville. Like I was telling you, it's a fabled fishery. We mean a lot to win the tournament here. So I've got some work to do. Not much, because I did a lot today, as you all saw. But I still wanted just a couple finishing touches on a few things. I need to get my computer out. I need to transfer some waypoints from back in the day. I, I have been to this lake probably five or six times. So I have some old waypoints on the Garmin uh, program there on my computer, at home port actually. So I can save all my waypoints, which I do all the time. And I can import them and export them. And so I'm going to import them in because I haven't been to Garmin in a long time. And, and uh, that, well, you know, those little sweet spots on those ledges. Um, little humps, different things that you know you find over the years. You can save in your Garmin, and then you can transfer it, save the file on your computer, and you can keep it forever, so. So what's your plan for tomorrow? What you thinking? Uh, I'm gonna go down the lake, I'm gonna stop. Dude, I'm telling you, he, you better have really good insurance on him. 
<laughs> so I'm going down the lake. I'm going yes. down the lake, and I'm going to look for shad spawn and stuff, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to probably spend the majority of my day offshore. Okay. Looking for the wing fish. Sounds really good. It sounds real, real, real good. This is called the Guggen Grande Recon. Okay, it's the deep diving crankbait. They make several different sizes, but this is the biggest one they make. It says it goes 20 foot deep. I haven't thrown this one yet. I've thrown the smaller ones. We just haven't been on a ledge tournament yet, so I haven't actually thrown this. So I'm judging this bait at this point, right? It's made by Ketchco. Ketchco does a fantastic job. I'm super impressed with what Ketchco has done um, with all of their baits. I mean, innovative, and they really pay attention to, like, the important things. So I've helped them on a few little things, but I'm telling you the, who they're working with, of course, the Guggen Squad guys, giving some really good input, and they're getting a lot of good input from some other people. So uh, some things I like about this bait, number one, it's just got a good feel to it. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel cheap. It, it's a good, solid crankbait. It, it has a little weight to it. I like that, so it's going to cast far. And um, that's a, I can tell you right now that that lip, proven lip. So if these fish get out deep, they're going to bite this thing really well. Colors, spot on. Hooks, I mean, those are sticky sharp. But here's what I love about this thing. Listen how tight this is. That sounds good. Okay. That's a big, deep one knocker sound. I like that a lot. So, that little dude right there is going to get chunked around a lot tomorrow. But again, we may not find them out deep. You know, they, we're in that transition period where these fish are going to be, I think, obviously it's brightness, are going to be a mixture of everything. You know, we've got warming trend coming. So, I will say this. The fish are heading that way. That's a fact. So, let, no matter how many fish are on the bank tomorrow or how many fish are shallow tomorrow, there will be less fish shallow derby day. And there will be less fish shallow by the end of the tournament. Somebody could very well blow this tournament away by literally finding a school of fish or a spot offshore where the first day, maybe there's only a few there, the second day, a few more. By day three and four, all of a sudden, this mega school develops. I mean, that, that's literally the time frame that we're in. Where like, you're, like, I find a, a school of fish with six or seven fish in it, that could easily turn into a mega school before the tournament is over, which is kind of an interesting thing. So it's going to take a lot. Like I, that's why it took all day today to rig tackle because there's so many different options, right? As there's a little tip I'm going to give you real quick on rigging a swim bait. Got a swim bait head right here. Got a standard swim bait, a little hollow belly. And you know, if you run it through here and get it all wanky a few times and pull it out, you're going to mess it up and it doesn't stay locked on there real well. So I'm going to tell you how you can, really you know do a good job on rigging this thing every time so you what well, the number one thing is you need to figure out when are you going to come out of the bait right so this hook however long that hook is so i want to match that up like that first okay and i know the hook is going to come out i'm just going to put my thumb right there i'm going to pinch it okay so i know the hook's going to come out somewhere in between very important to go dead straight on Dead straight on. Try not to get any of that plastic, right? You want to stay in that channel. You want to come out right there. Perfect. Now, see, look at that. It came out right. Dead center. Dead center. Very important. Now, here's a little tip that a lot of people don't know. I'll use super glue a lot of times, too, to glue that head up. But when, before I push it up on that hook, see how I have it pushed all the way up? Yet there's that little lead tooth right there that holds that little that little bait keeper is right there okay instead of just pushing it on you're tearing that plastic right there and so it's going to pull off just as easy so here's what i do that's very important watch this i turn the head sideways so i get that that bait keeper 90 degrees okay look at that 90 degrees then push it on okay now turn the head back straight turn the head back straight so now i've tore it going into the side and then I'll lock it back straight. Now that is on there. 
in fresh plastic and it um, takes a lot to rip that off but that's a perfectly rigged swim bait right there guys so again dead center coming out dead center going in and before you push it all the way up turn it and then pull it on and then lock it back that'll save you a lot of swim baits it'll save you um, you know a lot of time fooling with stuff too then if you put a little dab of super glue on it like right now it's really locked in but to be honest with you as long as you lock it in like that you don't need much super glue I think we're ready guys that is it I'm gonna leave y'all with that um, I apologize for it wasn't a very creative uh, travel vlog a little crusty yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching we didn't have very far to go from Canterbury's to here but nevertheless we're rigged up we are ready to go and I'm gonna go hit the sack I'm gonna take my iPad in there I'm gonna look at the map and uh, kind of formulate a little bit of a game plan tomorrow again tomorrow morning we're gonna start the very first day of practice so this is gonna be a whole new video for you guys so get ready to watch that coming up it's gonna be the first three days of practice you're gonna to get to see Matt Airy as well as Scott Canterbury how we approach this lake and, uh, and all that good stuff. So thank you for the support, and we will see you guys later. Bye!